Kevin's checking in with the mechanics about Ramblin' Rose, who's here for a bee service. And what are we up to? Welcome to the Joy of Trucking. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video. Kevin's going to talk about what to do or why uh, sometimes you encounter trailers that sit too high. And also, you'll get to see him do some pretty cool moves with the truck in the yard here. And chat about a bunch of different stuff. Enjoy. Hey, did you find an empty? Just this one. That's the only one. There's an empty over there, but it's got a lock on it. Glad hands. Uh, if I hook up to this one, though, I don't really want my tractor sitting here. I'll hook up to this empty trailer, go around and pull through over by those guys. Coming home here, uh, I was in the middle of three lanes. On the left lane, I saw some debris up ahead. I wasn't sure what it was. And a car just passed me, so he was slightly ahead of me. It looked like an aluminum ladder or some, something like that. And that guy swerved to avoid it. He, he, he pulled a little to the left. And some other guy was coming up behind him so fast, it was so close to him, he didn't see it. So he ran over it and pieces went flying up in the air. So I got a ding. It's a little chip in the paint there oh, and there and poor there. Poor Ramblin' Rose. My brand new truck. Oh, well, how brand new at this point in time? Uh, 79,000 miles. It's still new for, <laughs> for camp work. Yeah. And what uh, what was supposed to happen at 75? Well, this is the this was the B service. There's also some kind of recall. The uh, the shocks for the uh, for the hood. When you flip the hood open, a couple of struts keep it from falling all the way to the ground. So there was a recall on something on that because it was starting to crack the, uh, the body itself. So it had to be replaced and reinforced and all kinds of stuff. And how convenient that your home is here. So you actually were able to spend that time at home and you got to sleep, sleep in your in own, own bed, bed. Yeah. with your wife by your side. Oh my God, that was so wonderful to have you home. Wonderful. Yeah, put you right to work. Uh, building <laughs> Ikea cabinets. Yeah, quite, quite the honeydew list in our new furniture. Home. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of chores pile up when you're gone for a month. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a project. holes. <laughs> what do you think, huh? Instructions? We need a hammer. Mm, do we have a hammer? Two screwdrivers, a pencil, and a ruler. We need two people. What you doing? Doing the honeydew list. No, I, I meant specifically, what are you doing? I'm screwing the wall. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> this is a PG channel, Kevin. You gotta get it where you can. <laughs> uh, you're gonna go hook up? Yeah. Here, let me give you these air filters. Thanks for the air filters, honey. <laughs> courtesy, courtesy of Richie. Shout out to Richie. Yeah, hey, thanks, Richie. At the, at the service center here in the land. New subscriber to the channel. You got me a free plan. It's getting busy here. Yeah, okay. Thank you.
slick. I can tell the trailer's too high. Yeah. You can see it right here. The guy who dropped it here put the landing gear down and maybe went one or two cranks too many or yeah most likely and um, I've noticed a lot when you when you go pick up a loaded trailer somewhere or you drop a loaded and you pick up an empty sometimes they're really high up in the air and it's the difference between the trailer being loaded and then you drop the landing gear and then when it's empty right it sits a little bit higher and it depends also position of the tandems right because there's a bit of it's a bit of leverage you know the, the wheels are the, the tipping point too right and sometimes you pick up a trail and you're like wow why is it so you know really low or really high it's, it's the difference between when it was loaded and unloaded whether it was cranked down at that time and people have talked about dropping actual air out of the tractor what's the story on that so you can you have uh, the suspension on the drive axles a bunch of big airbags in addition to the leaf springs and everything so you can release the air from the airbags and the frame the fifth wheel and the frame of the truck will sink down and then when you throw the switch on the airbags fill up it comes back up so keep that in mind when you're coming in under a trailer if your airbags are empty and you come under the trailer you actually might be too low and miss the miss the kingpin or or hit it wrong because your fifth wheel is too low you know but if you're coming in under a trailer that's been left cranked down and it's it's loaded it's going to be really hard to turn that crank and crank and crank to get the trailer up enough so you can get your fifth wheel under it just let the air out of the airbags and it'll it'll drop down right yeah. nice yep thanks time for an inspection Nice job, Richie. <laughs> he watched our video about Kevin getting his uh, surprise DOT roadside inspection and not having that sticker in Arkansas. So he saw that video and he was funny. He's like, I made sure to put that sticker. So thank you. Watch for gators down there. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Here's 
the story. I got a load from from LA all the way to Lakeland, Florida. Very happy about that, and brought it in yesterday. So like over 2,500 miles, uh, and I've been getting some some good juicy loads the last the last couple of weeks. There, I had I had a run from Ohio to El Paso, and then from Houston all the way out to uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. So 1,800 mile runs and stuff like that, and then top it off 2,500 miles back here. Now, the thing that was kind of overshadowing all that was I needed the B service done on the truck at 75,000 miles. That's to come in for an oil change and maintenance and all that sort of stuff, DOT inspection. And so when I was delivering to Florida, I called my asset manager and said, I want to get the truck up to my home terminal in Deland so they can do the servicing. It's actually overdue. It's past 75,000 miles, but there were no terminals out that way where I was. And he said, yeah, sure, I'll uh, take it on up there and get it done. So yesterday, dropped the truck off, went into the shop, gave him the keys. It was uh, after afternoon somewhere. Anyway, uh, I got to go home and sleep in my own bed last night, see the wife, and she had a list of honeydew stuff for me, but it was all good. And then uh, I was wondering all day when the truck would be ready. I thought, I thought it would be early morning or something. So yeah, I called, well, I, I, if I may interject, you did get up bright and early and were on the phone starting at 7 a.m. when they... The shop opens. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Keen to know, go! When I, uh, when I finally got a hold of somebody, they said there was still, still some work to do. There's some kind of recall thing going on. So I knew it was more than just the simple, simple periodic maintenance, you know. Uh, so it wasn't until uh, about two in the afternoon I got a call saying the truck was, was done and ready. Uh, so the first thing I did was call my asset manager and say, you know, I have the truck's ready and it'll take me a while to get to get to, together and get on the truck and all that. And uh, we were actually out at Lowe's. We were <laughs> doing some shopping at the time, so there was a lot going on. Anyway, I said, why don't I, you know, just give me a load for tomorrow morning and I'll be on the truck and, and rearing to go first thing in the morning. So since we were in the neighborhood, I started thinking about it and thought, why don't I go see if there's an empty trailer? Because it's, you know, it, it'd be a lot easier to find one now than to come in here at five in the morning and not have an empty trailer and then have to go drive 50 miles to go find one, right? So uh, I came in and talked to the guys in the shop and found out that what, what they had done besides the oil and fuel filter and all that other stuff and the inspection, there is a um, <laughs> what was that? the shocks, or the struts that that hold the hood when you flip the hood open. There was some kind of recall or rebuild or something from the factory uh, had to be changed or installed or something. So that took a while too. He said he had to take the grill off and everything. So uh, that's why it, it took a while today to get it done. Got the DOT inspection sticker on there, uh, so that was done, and then came out here and looked around and actually found an empty trailer so I thought I'd, I should hook up to it better than, than coming in tomorrow morning and not having one and as soon as I got in the truck and looked I had a bunch of messages and one of them was a pre-plan so all of a sudden there's a pre-plan for a load uh, going just 60 miles out picking up a trailer and bringing it back here I wouldn't have seen it if I hadn't come here to get an empty trailer it would have been just on the tablet because I wasn't really checking messages on my phone anymore yeah, because she said nothing till tomorrow. Yeah, because yeah. she said there's no, there's nothing going on until tomorrow anyway. So I would figured I'll just do my 34 since I've already been here like 25, 26 hours <laughs> anyway, you know. So I may as well just do my 34 and start out fresh in the morning. So uh, the other thing is you, when you, uh, usually when you finish a run or you go home for a while or something, you always tell them your projected time that you'll be available and I had not done that anywhere in here in the last 24 hours I just said I'm taking my truck in to get serviced and I'll let you know when it's ready so when they I guess when they realized the truck was finished they thought I would be available right away and, and they got me a load um, but there's I think I think there was uh, miscommunication like I was speaking to somebody on the phone saying I'd like to get a load for tomorrow morning and then right away somebody else got me a load going out this afternoon. I'm, I'm just, I just sent a message saying I'm turning the load down and my available time would be tomorrow morning. 
I also have to send a message saying I've got an empty trailer. I have to send them the trailer number so they know not to not to try to find me one. Right? And that was super lucky. I'm very lucky. It was the last trailer I looked at and it happened to be empty and available. Cool. Okay. And now the B inspection is good for a year? Or uh, does it go by good. mileage? There's a sticker right here. So the next uh, service is at 118,000, which is about 35,000 miles from now. And uh, then the B inspection at 154,000. So the same, you know, when I got the truck, uh, the first servicing was at 37,000 miles and the next servicing was at 75,000 miles. So every 37,000 miles you go in for service. But I don't think they, uh, they're two, it's an A and a B. So there's two different lists of things that they have to do. Like I don't, they don't change the oil every 37,000 miles. I think it's every 75,000. Okay, so there's a difference between the two intervals. And what are they checking then? Well, they, they do the DOT inspection at, at each service uh, period. And so you always get the, the fresh DOT sticker for that. And there's probably basic like greasing and stuff like that. And they have a checklist, so they're checking the brakes, the brake linings, air hoses, and all your fluids and all that stuff. But I don't think you get an oil change, and I'm not sure if you get a fuel filter on every every one of those. It might be every second one, you know. Awesome. It's amazing how long the oil lasts now. When I, you know, when I when I own cars, I always change the oil like every 5,000 miles, and uh, apparently on these trucks it lasts a lot longer. <laughs> and tell us why you're running the engine. Uh, I was running the engine because I just parked the truck here and I'm also charging up the battery a little bit because uh, I left the fridge on all last night and I'm going to leave it on again tonight so I just don't want my my liver thawing out in the freezer. There will right? be blood everywhere. <laughs> and tell us about this. So these, uh, like I said, they changed the air filter, the fuel filter, the oil filter and all that and uh, I said did you change the filter for the interior cab, you know, there's, uh, I know on the Freightliner there's three. There's one up on the, in the engine compartment for the air conditioner, so it, it filters the air that's blowing into the cab. There's also a filter in the dashboard behind the glove box that filters the air that circulates inside the truck. And there's another filter back here in the Freightliner. It's, it's down by the floor for the air conditioning unit for the bunk. And I think the, the Kenworth's going to have one under the bunk for the heater as well. I'm not sure if there's one in uh, inside the truck on the dashboard. So I'm going to have to get in behind there and, and take a look and see. But I got the one for, for the engine compartment for sure. And uh, I got a spare in case the same size fits under the bunk back there. Mm -hmm. So I'll be doing that. And, nice. uh, and they told me they don't normally change those on every service call but personally I like I just like to make sure that you know because we go into a lot of parking lots there where there's dust flying all over the place the exhaust from these diesel engines even though it's it's filtered and there's death and everything there's still a lot of soot and stuff floating around and you're you're sucking that in you know and breathing it and uh, I just like to make sure it's it's clean I care about that stuff and so does my honey <laughs> yes I do thank you well, anything else? Nothing else. We're we're saddled up. I gotta send this trailer number in. I gotta send a message telling them I got an empty trailer, and then we are gonna retire home. We got all our stuff that we just we just bought at the store. We gotta get that to the house and have dinner. Yeah. So here we go. Okay. So now you're now, gonna communicate. Yeah. I'll send, just send a normal text message saying. have your little smart book with you? Where your little book, hon? Oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> All right, so now they know if I have an empty, they don't have to find me one. Okay. All good? All good. And I see, so this is how you have the uh, scooter in here, huh? Yeah, the scooter is, is back here because it doesn't fit under the bunk. And uh, I didn't want it on the bunk in case it wanted to come down on my head someday. <laughs> yeah. 
So you didn't yeah, want to just, snuggle with it on the bottom bunk? Just kind of climbing over it all the time. Yeah. They do make a smaller model that you can probably yeah. slide in the side door, but, but yeah. you have had so much fun with that. And I will tell you, it was so much fun. Like, you sent me pictures from underway and videos, and you had so many exploring adventures that uh, I was really happy for you. It was good to be mobile. It was good to be, you know, be able to go and check out the town where you're where you're staying overnight or for your 34 or if you had to you had to run out and get some groceries like, you know, you couldn't you couldn't pull into a grocery store, but you get on a scooter and go 2 miles down the road and come back with a backpack full of food, and you're all set. Yeah. Yeah, and they make one that that folds smaller and has smaller wheels, so it will fit under the bunk. Uh, the one they sent us to try was uh, just about their biggest model. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. And I didn't want to strap it on the on the deck uh, behind the sleeper because it yeah. would have been too exposed to all the dirt and rain and everything else. Well, you could, but yeah. it's nicer to keep it inside. Yeah, then I'd tarp it too. But it's yeah, it's much safer here. Yeah, and you had fun with it. Okay. Well, what else do you have to do now? Anything, or are we ready to go? We're ready to go. We're gonna get cool. out of here. I'll okay. Change, I'll change those filters uh, in a day or two when I got some time at the end of the day. Nice. Yeah, because now there's still a honeydew list for you at home. Let's get back and finish that up. Back to work. Back to, yeah, back to work. <laughs> then you'll be making your escape soon. All right. Hey, want to finish out the video? So if you like this video, a uh, day in the life of a truck driver, a happy truck driver who got to spend the night at home last night, another night tonight. It's very nice. And uh, so give me a thumbs up, comments down below, and hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and I'll see you down the road. We'll be rolling soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> With love, I'm Kevin and Tanya. Bye.